Tonight, court is wrapping up in day one of what'll be one of the higher profile trials of the year. The victim, a Connecticut mother of five who went missing. Her body never found after years of searching in a story that went national almost instantly. Prosecutors alleging the husband of Jennifer Dulos and his girlfriend worked together to plan Jennifer's killing. The girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, is pleading not guilty as she now faces the charge of conspiracy to commit murder. And while people coast to coast heard about what happened, it's the local reporters on the ground who covered every in and out, every development in this case, including NBC Connecticut's Shannon Miller. She's been reporting on this story for years. She's got tonight's backstory. A missing mother of five. Now to the case of missing new Canaan mother, Jennifer Dulos. The frantic search for her captivating the public. The estranged husband charged with murder, but his suicide under house arrest blowing up the entire case and her body never found. Now, more than four years of investigations and legal drama, the grieving family of murdered mom Jennifer Dulos is finally getting a chance at justice. The trial of Michelle Draconis kicking off in a Connecticut courthouse. She stands accused of conspiring with Dulos' husband to plan the murder, charges she has pleaded not guilty to. I've been covering every twist and turn as a reporter for NBC Connecticut along the way. Lots of photographs being taken out here tonight. Jennifer is an incredibly gentle and wonderful person. She loves her children dearly. It began in May of 2019. Family and friends of Dulos reported her as missing, kicking off a statewide search. Almost immediately, suspicion landed on her husband, Fotis Dulos. The two were in the middle of a messy divorce and child custody battle. His new girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, also suspected. A stunning development. Fotis Dulos, along with another woman, are under arrest in connection with a criminal investigation. A week later, prosecutors charged a couple with evidence tampering and hindering prosecution. Surveillance video caught Fotis Dulos disposing of items that were found to contain traces of Jennifer's blood. Fotis's defense team hitting back with a shocking claim that Jennifer might have staged her own disappearance, like the plot of the book Gone Girl. We are actively contemplating a revenge suicide hypothesis as an explanation for her disappearance. Prosecutors not convinced by that theory, but after months of searching, they still had no idea where Jennifer Dulos was. But eight months after Jennifer went missing, prosecutors felt they had enough physical and circumstantial evidence to bring charges. In January of 2020, they charged Fotis Dulos with murder and charged girlfriend Michelle Traconis with conspiracy to commit murder. Michelle Traconis in handcuffs. Both of them put under house arrest as they waited trial. But then, just weeks later, a disturbing twist. This is where it all began earlier this morning at Fotis Dulos' Farmington home, that suicide attempt. Fotis Dulos rushed to the hospital after attempting suicide at his home in Connecticut. When officers responded... They could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. The accused father of five trying to die by carbon monoxide poisoning in his garage. Then two days later, Fotis Dulos was declared dead tonight at 532. Prosecutor's main suspect gone, leaving behind a suicide note proclaiming his innocence. Quote, I refuse to spend even an hour more in jail for something I had nothing to do with. The next day I sat down with Dulos's attorneys who vowed to clear their client's name. He was accused by the world and there was nowhere he wouldn't go or could go without whispering and hateful comments made about him. Leaving his girlfriend Michelle to fend for herself in court. In May of that year, Tracone is breaking her nearly year-long silence, proclaiming her innocence in a statement, saying she didn't know what Fotis was capable of, and quote, I think it was a mistake to have trusted him. NBC's Dateline features the saga that year, and I was happy to help provide contacts through all the twists and turns. We were finally able to put a face with this name. That immediate day after, it was the lead story on every single newscast. Another three years pass without a major break in the case. Jennifer Dulos' body is still missing. Her memory lives on in her five children and in a makeshift memorial. But her most enduring legacy may be Jennifer's Law, signed by Connecticut's governor on the two-year anniversary of Dulos' disappearance, which broadens the definition of domestic violence to better protect victims. Shannon is joining us now from NBC Connecticut's newsroom up in West Hartford. Shannon, we're so glad to have you with us. Thank you for being here. 
Well, thanks for having me, Hallie. This case has just gripped Connecticut for years. And today, no different. Michelle Tracon is walking into Stanford Superior Court. And I have to tell you, she's done this dozens of times. But there was something different about today's court mm -hmm. appearance. It was eerily silent when she walked in, Hallie. Uh, it, you could feel the weight of what today means finally getting to this point. You know, this segment, in so many ways, Shannon, we talk about the backstory, right, taking us behind the scenes, as you did there, sort of step by step covering a case like this when you're on the ground at the local level, doing it sort of day in and day out. Talk us through now, here we are, years later, yeah. and it is the start of what is going to be, I think, yeah. a very closely watched trial, not just where you are in Connecticut, but around the country. Yeah, I think what struck me the most today was just, again, that feeling of the weight of finally being here at the courthouse. When I made it upstairs, both Turconis's family were there, um, Jennifer Dulles's family were there. There were tears when Jennifer's mother walked into the courtroom. And then that tension just got even stronger today, Hallie, because for the first time, we saw these brand new videos from New Canaan police and state police, that body-worn camera video of them coming into Jennifer Dulles's house for the very first first time after she'd been reported missing, you see these lives of her five children just come to a standstill. Their shoes uh, still in the mudroom, their toys still out in the home, mm. their kitchen looked like they had uh, balloons up there in that house um, the day and, and the night before she went missing. Uh, so these details are really going to start to unravel. We're going to start to see what we heard about, Hallie, and those arrest warrants play out uh, visually and both from testimony from witnesses. Shannon Miller, thank you so much for bringing us such a comprehensive look at this. I'm sure we'll talk again in the days and weeks to come. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.